Hello, and today we're live on the Archie Luxury Channel. Archie Luxury Channel, and I got a very special guest of mine. This is Rich. Rich is a great friend of mine. Rich is from What's on the Wrist. What is on the Wrist? Now, I'm going to be interviewing Rich. I'm going to be grilling him today. <laughs> no. <laughs> and uh, we'll be asking him some, some watch questions. So firstly, thank you so much for joining us on the Archie Luxury Channel. How yeah, are you going? Good. I'm, I'm doing good. Thanks for, thanks for inviting me and for doing those two collabs uh, earlier. That was a lot of fun. No worries. I'm sorry for being slack. I, was, I had some emotional problems. I had some depression. I had mm -hmm. dating site troubles. I was poking poking certain things we you spoke about yesterday i was poking bears and uh <laughs> yeah. i uh i uh i i i was look look that's cool but i i'm glad to have you on rich i wanted to ask you some questions firstly if you don't mind okay so how how old are you firstly you're how old uh 42 42 and you live in san fran uh, LA. LA. Okay. Yeah. Expensive enough. That's expensive enough. <laughs> yeah, a little and bit. You have you collect watches yourself, don't you? I do, yes. How many watches do you have in your collection, Rich? Oh, uh maybe six, maybe six, maybe seven. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. And uh just if you want to give now in my everyone knows the Archie Luxury collection i've got my paddock philippe world time the 5110 in yellow gold i got the jegula culture reverso grand date in steel manual wind i got the explorer 2 polar the amica speedmaster man on the moon and two recent editions were the breguet type 20 and the iwc ingy yeah, what everyone, do you have yeah everyone's familiar with your collection mine uh Tell me what you got. The Rolex DJ thirty six. Uh, uh, what model is that? What model is that? Sorry. One six two zero zero. One six two zero. Ah, oh, steel with smooth bezel. Yes. Beautiful uh, piece. Beautiful piece. Yep. Yep. Great. You bought that new or second hand? No, my my father gave that to me. He wow. That. Yeah. Yeah. That's a beautiful it watch. It. it was brand new when he bought it. I was with him. I was with him when he was shopping for it. And then a couple wow. years ago, he turned around and gave it to me. Wow, that's a beautiful present. The next piece? The Grand Seiko SBGR097. That's the quartz one, isn't it? No, it's the mechanic. It's a automatic. It's the limited edition 55th anniversary. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. The third mm -hmm. piece? Uh, a Jean Richard, the Aeroscope, the um, the DLC black. Okay. Uh, Next piece. Uh, a vintage Omega Constellation. I think that was from around the mid mid to late eighties. It's a quartz. Yep. Yep. The two tone, the the gold and steel. Uh, yep. The Panerai, the forty mil with the uh, power reserve. Oh, okay, cool. And steel. Um, uh, the I, I, I saw a couple months ago, I had the IWC Aqua Timer. I sold that one. And I like that. That was a cool watch. It was good. I like it. It was, it was a little bit big for me now. It was, it was, it was a really big watch. And, uh, um, I, I think that's... I think that's all. But primarily nowadays, I just wear my my GS and my and my DJ. Okay. Now tell me this: Are you going to get? What do you what 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 watch are you lusting after? That's a good question. Uh, okay, I sold my I, I sold my uh, my Aqua Timer because I wanted to get either the Blanc Pond Fifty Fathoms or the Submariner. Um, so I yes. put that or that for war chest. So for divers, I was thinking one either one of those two. I think it goes Submariner, ceramic no date. Is that what you're thinking? Uh, yes, yes. Um, but I do like. I actually like the fifty fathoms better. But I am a little nervous about the resale because I, you know, it's just yeah. That's that's. I mean, blank pan. I mean, 
they were a really prestigious brand, but they're a bit like Breguet. They've come back from the death. Yeah, are they I, the same? I, you, you know, I mean, I mean, they're a posh brand, but are they really that special? You know? Yeah, I, I thought I did like it, but yeah, I just you can get them for really cheap now, or cheap yes. with the luxury price range. Yes, yes, yes. So. Tell me this, you've always loved watches. You're also a bit of a cigar man. <laughs> yes, yeah, yes, that's true. Yeah, I, I do love my cigars as well there. And, are, Cubans, uh, are Cubans legal? Are Cubans legal in Australia? Yes, they are. Yes, we didn't have the embargo. Yeah. Yep, yep. So you can, get them, you can get them freely at any yeah, place that sells cigars? Look, cigars are hideously expensive here. We've got a lot of nasty taxes. They've even mm. outlawed the wrappers. Can you believe that? The wrappers. In my country, the wrappers need – you can't sell a cigar any sort of branding. It's got to be very generic letters. Oh, I so didn't know that. Even the beautiful cigar art, you know, like the wrappers, they're not allowed to sell right. them with that on it. It's just absolute mm. bullshit. It's, it's nanny state gone crazy. Um, I, I, I'm a huge fan. I got to tell you my favorite cigar. I had a fan a couple years ago, sent me some Cohibas, Cuban nice. Cohibas. They Which were one? amazing. The Bahikis or the Santa Cruz Cohiba? Uh, I think they, they were still about $80 a stick, believe it or not. They were absolutely amazing. These were, um, uh, I'm not sure they were, they were, but they were amazing. They're amazing. I've had I've had Cohiba a few, t not many times. I could probably count it on, on on two hands how many Cohibas I've had. They're very expensive. Yeah, I love I, Cohiba. Yeah, I love Monte Cristos. Right, everyone does. Sure, that was one of my first Cubans, the Monte Cristos, the number two. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I I've bought a few boxes of Monte Cristos over the years. I I love Monte Cristos. Um. I tell you what I'm a huge fan of in cigars. This I haven't. They had the uh, Dunhill Santana. The Santana, and they I had think. a huge ring gauge. That they that they, they kind of went out like a trumpet. You know, really big at one end and really small on the sucking end. The last Dunhill that I smoked was the signed range. So I, the one that you mentioned that sounds interesting, but I haven't tried that. Yeah, yeah. No, I haven't. I haven't managed to track this down for a long time. I love a Dunhill. A lot of the Dunhill cigars are Dominican Republic, I think. They're not actually Cuban. Yeah, but, the, uh, the signed range, I think, is a Nicaraguan one. But I think Dunhill sold their they sold their um, cigar lineup to someone else. I can't remember who it was, but I think Dunhill was bought up by someone, or they sold. Yeah, it. I I got to tell you, I I kind of I find the Domin the uh, the Cuban cigars a little bit strong, a little bit. You know, because mm. I'm not a huge cigar smoker because I can't afford it. And I'm, I'm, <laughs> You know, but I've uh, I've actually run out of cigars as we speak. I, I am empty. The box, the the humidor is empty. Oh. Uh, it's very. I like I like the the wet. They, these are called wet cigars. You know, because you have those petrol stations. You know, like the Henry Winterman. They're a dry cigar. Those Dutch cigars. Okay. I I, yeah. I really do like the the wet cigars. You know, with the humidity, you want to keep them in a certain humid. You know, you know that's 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 the sort of cigar I do love. I think those. Do you, do you have a humidor? Do you keep them in a humidor? Yes, I got a travel humidor. I do. I do. You have to. You have to. You yeah. yeah. But I got to tell you, in all honesty, there it's um, <clears throat> cigars. I love, I love a good cigar. Mm -hmm. um, I got to tell you, beautiful watches are are another wonderful thing to to have there um, they go together nicely i think they go together nicely especially having a nice watch when you're enjoying your cigar it, it it's a nice yeah. pair yeah i i think you know that's good to see you got the dj i if i were you i i would probably buy a rolex for yourself i think you need to get something you've bought a rolex yourself you need a bit of backbone in your collection datejust is a great watch yeah, I don't, um, I don't think that I would have bought it um, for myself, but it was given to me my, by my dad. If I bought one, it probably would have been a Samaritan, maybe the Pepsi. Yeah. I was thinking, why don't you get a Speedmaster Men on the Moon? They are bargain at the moment. I had one. Shop is, yeah. I forgot. You had one. I did. I did. I had, I had one a while ago, but I sold it. I, it just, I'm going against Archie here, but yeah, I, it, it, it didn't quite do it. It didn't quite do it for me, but I did own one, yeah. 
I did a video on that. Yeah, I sold it. And okay, that's a bit of a shame. Now, tell me this: what is the um, what is the with the with the collection itself? There, I get a lot more enjoyment out of having a smaller collection than a huge collection. Right. Yeah. I think you learn uh -huh. a lot when you have something, then you sell it. You know, you you kind of you learn. I think you learn more. Yeah, you know, the, there, I don't regret the ones that I sold. I don't regret the Aqua Timer or the Omega uh, or my Brightling. I also had a Brightling. But I do regret my reversal. I had a reversal, and I regret selling that. Oh, and I have a Gerard Pergo. I'm sorry, the, the GP 1945 vintage. Um, I have that one. But I sold okay. my reversal, and, and, I, and I regret that. It just didn't fit right on me. And every what reversal time, did you have? Uh, it, I, I don't remember it. This was... Eight years. I don't remember which which model it was. It was a bracelet. You flip it over, and it um, it was a. I think it was just a solid case back. Okay, uh, well, wasn't the tribute to nineteen thirty one? Was it? I, I didn't know about that much about the reverse at that time. If I did, I don't think I would have sold it. No, that's no. I, I look. I know much more about it now than I did at that time. Um, but I actually sold that. Another yeah, yeah. I, I bought that. I I got the Gerard Perigo instead because I I just felt I liked the way that one looked more. I, I'm not a huge fan of the Gerard Perigo. I must say, yeah, the, very no, soft, no. very soft brand. You know what I mean? Uh, it they, they do everything in house, but yeah, the resale. It's you know I would I would take a beating on that one right now. Do you buy them new or you buy them used? No, I've never bought a pre-owned uh, piece. I know you're a big fan of that, obviously. Oh. Well, wow. yeah. I'm just going to have a Krona, Krona beer, you know, a Krona, a Krona beer. We're talking about cigars and all your wonderful things. So, okay, you don't ever buy pre-owned? I haven't. Um, but the next piece I get, it could be. It could be a pre-owned, and it, it would be either the Blanc Pond that I was mentioning or the um, or the Sub. Those would probably, I would probably go the pre-root. Pre for that, it does make me nervous. So it makes me nervous because those are those are thousands of dollars. So I don't know if I would trust. Um, I don't know if I would trust the source. Is good dealer kenning you in? He he's yeah. at Newport Beach. He's pretty good. He's Vietnamese. Yeah, no. He's Vietnamese yeah. ancestry. Right. Lovely guy. Lovely guy. Yeah, the jeweler's on time. Um, but I was going to ask you, um, or not ask. I didn't really have these questions planned, but. No, it's far away. You're against department stores carrying pre-owned luxury watches, right? The yes, Rolex. definitely. Yeah, yeah, they don't know what they're doing. But do you find it that I find that I would might I might trust their source source a little bit better because they kind of done all the the research for me in, fi in terms of finding you know. I still think you're better off to find a good watch dealer. Just find a decent watch dealer. That's okay. it. Find a find a watch dealer and uh, somebody you like and. That's the way to do it. It's worked out well for you. It's worked out well for a lot of people. Yeah, I haven't always made money. I've lost money. APs have been terrible. I've uh... that service. The servicing was expensive. Wasn't it like four thousand to have that service? Yeah, three and a half thousand Aussie dollars. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty bad. But tell me this: in in your collection itself, there, um, how soon before we get the sub? I, if I had plan, the plan was within a couple months when I sold my Aqua Timer, which was a yeah. couple of months ago. So, you know, I put the funds into a war chest, but it's not untouchable. There are other priorities where that money would go to if something comes up. So, I see. I'm still hoping maybe, maybe by the holidays. Um, okay, that's good. Next that's watch, good. Whether it's a sub or another watch, maybe by the holidays. And and you love watches yourself? Uh, I grew up with watches. Yes. I've always liked watches, yes. And tell me this. it's um, What do you think of these collectors who have a lot of money and just buy what they want as opposed to working men like me and you who have to struggle for our collections? Do you, what, How do you feel about that? Well, I mean, they have the fun to do it. I don't think they're into the same horology as everyone else. You know, they just they just buy what's, what's trendy, what's on the wrist of everyone else. Um, yes. I, you can't blame them. They they have the money for it. 
But there are a lot of people who have who are affluent that want to still learn about watches. Uh, rather than plunk down 15, 20 grand. There are a handful that want to actually want to be educated on watches. But I can't blame them for just buying whatever they want whenever they want. I, I, I might be in that same situation too if I had their money. Are you a car person yourself? I am, yes. I like what cars. cars. What cars are you into? Well, I, if I had my dream car, it... I think it would either be the the Maserati, the Ford or Maserati, or or maybe the Porsche 911. That would be my. And what car do you have at the moment? Uh, Audi A4. Wow, a, a Audi A4. What year is that? Uh, 14. Wow, that's pretty good. That's a uh, the the Audi is a great car. Yeah, yeah. It's um. What do you think of the idea if I sold my World Time? And bought a ten-year-old Maserati Quattroport. Ten years old, so with a two thousand and mm, two thousand seven Maserati for your. You were still that would still leave you with a nice co uh, collection. Until I needed repairs. <laughs> you know, I would, I would, I would do it. I don't. How much of a difference is the body from the two thousand and seven versus now? Is there a big? Oh, they look the same. Now? They look. I, I reckon the older one looked a bit better because it had that that really nice mouth on the thing. The mouth, you know, the the snarly mouth. That's what I I preferred about it. But um, I'd have to get some finance because cars are a bit more expensive than they are in America. You people get cars. You are so lucky to have cheap cars in America. You know that we've got healthcare. We have free yeah. health care, but I'd rather have cheap cars. Well, the Maserati here for that quadruple port, I, I think they go, it goes for about 160. How much are they in in Australia? Uh, look, they, they are really damn expensive. I'm just going to show you. I'll show you now. I'll just bring that up on my screen. Just bear with me. Yeah, but to and answer you, I would do it. I, I would do it. See, look at this. This is a 10-year-old quadruple port. They want 90 grand for it. 29,000 miles, is that what it says? Uh, kilometers, which is a bit less. Oh. I'll, I'll look at the cheapest one I can get. Okay, here we go. Here's, here's a 1998. Okay, that's a bit of an oldie. Here we go. Here's one here. 36,000. I don't 000. like that first one. Sorry? I don't like that first one. That yeah, one looks that's a 90. like a Challenger. That's yeah, a 90. it's like a Dodge Challenger. Yeah, but here, look at this. This is, this is classic. Okay, the Ks are a bit high. Right, look at this one here. This is what fifty thousand. It's got fifty thousand kilometers on it. This is a Maserati Quattroport Executive. Look at this. This is a lot of bang per, a lot of bang per buck. Oh, Look at this here. Yeah, I like it. I like Look it. At that. What do you think? I like it. Do it. I would do it. Cream interior. Yeah, nice. So I, like I could put, I could put my paddock, sell my world time, and then borrow half. Okay. What do you reckon? Yeah, I would do it. I would only because you have a really nice. You have you still have your reversal, your 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 Rolex, your um, your your Man in the Moon. Yeah, I would do it. Yeah, I think yeah, that's. Yeah. I, yeah, I would do it. Yeah, I um, I have to have a think about this, Rich. You're just you're a bit too. Um, it's a bit too. It's a big. It's a big step for me. You know, uh, the other thing I was looking at was a Bentley. I really love Bentleys. Do you like Bentleys? Uh, I do. I like the Maserati's more my my taste, but you know Bentley. Who, you know, I don't know anybody who doesn't like a Bentley. I saw. Did you do a video about on a Rolls Royce? Where was that? In a in a shopping mall. Yeah, that was actually in. Uh, that was in Thailand. That one. Yes. Oh, that was okay. Yeah. yeah so that was really cool. That was really cool. Three hundred. Uh, look yeah. at this. You got a two thousand and six Flying Spur, seventy grand. 12 cylinder car they can't be that expensive to maintain would they uh yeah i think they are 2007 i'm not sure if, is that the one where they have these the the sky the um evening stars on the roof no that uh no no bentley didn't do that that was rolls, oh, rolls, royce, royce. rolls royce yeah yeah you're right yeah look at this these, these can't be that what well, they can't be that expensive to fix can they uh i don't 12 cylinder yeah yeah i mean because you've got so many yeah. cylinders there you wouldn't need to service it that much, would you? 
I think you might. I think I, I think you might. That's already ten years, right? Ten years old by now. Yeah, is that getting a bit old? You're gonna need some servicing, I would think. After, you know, ten years. I think you start the car starts to fall apart after what six, seven years. Mm. Or not what fall apart. You, fall what apart, made you go with the A4? Tell me this. Tell me about the A4. What made you go with the A4? I just I've always liked Audi. Uh, I had a what did I have before that? I think I had a C class uh, before that one. Um, but I thought I you would get a lot more in the Audi. I like the the. Um, what model C class did you have? All wheel drive, uh, three hundred and fifty. Oh, you had a C two three hundred and fifty. Yeah, uh, here it's a three hundred and fifty. That's the one with the uh, six cylinder. Yes, that's a great car. It, it was okay. I didn't. I don't. I, I really like my Audi. I like my Audi a lot more. I, I like the all wheel drive. I think um, you know I've tried. Oh, you got a Quattro. You got an A four Quattro. Yeah, so I've traveled in the winter during the winter cross country and um it handled really it just it was it was effortless so there was no slipping it was just i really like it what uh what engine have you got in yours mm, it's a turbo turbo four in line four 222 horsepower which is on the lower end but it's fine i mean no it's, no that's, I, that's more than enough and, and uh that's a that's a great car what color blue blue mm. with like gray uh interior but I am looking, I was considering um, maybe the Volvo. The next one might be the Volvo. What do you think about Volvo? Maybe the C60? Uh, I, no? They, they, Ford owns them. You know, they use a lot of Ford parts in them now. They're not truly independent? No, no. Ford, they, they were based on the Mondeo for a while, which was a... A shocking car. So no, your answer is no to the Volvo. Yeah, very definitely no, no. Don't you can't go Volvo. Come on. <laughs> Can you go Volvo? Well, I, I, I think they're different. You know, I live in LA where it, there's just an overabundance of BMWs of, of Mercedes. I like Audi because it's it's not as gaudy to me. I didn't, I don't think it's as gaudy. It's just um, I, I like kind of stuff that doesn't stand out as much, but I know that's really nice. And that's what I thought about Volvo, um, but now I you're changing. A, yeah, Volvo. Volvo is actually very, very. Uh, next, you're going to tell me you're going to settle down and get married. <laughs> uh, that's going to have to happen sometime. It'll probably it'll happen soon. Yes. Um, yes. No to I, Volvo. I just okay. had an angry message came through on my phone here. Don't sell the paddock to buy a Bentley. Are you being kind, or did it say something mean about like don't listen to Rich? Yeah, don't listen to Rich. They they um, <laughs> politely, yeah. Politely. But I got to tell you, um, watch collecting. What watches do you hate? Tell me some watches you hate. Um, uh, what would I say that I hate? Um, uh, what? Well, I don't think this watch is around anymore, but I don't, and I never liked the Jacob watches. Do you remember they were? It was what every hip hop artist had. They were the big watches, and they had all four time zones on there. Do you remember the Jacob and Company? Yes. Those they were charging ridiculous amounts for that for that watch. It was like 44, 45, 46 millimeters, but I never liked that uh, even at the time, and I think they're just obsolete right now. Uh, yeah, I know what you're saying. It's a fair point. What else do I not like? Um, I think Amiga's made too many limited editions. You know what I mean? That pisses me. Many, it's confusing. I like what Ariel said on your show that the uh, the Hesselite Man in the Moon should be the gateway to yeah. the engine. Like, I agree with that. I thought that was a good idea. There's just too many. Too many. Too yes. many. You're right. You're right. You're right. It's... Um, What do you uh? What piece what? in my collection do you love the most? Your reverso. Oh, you love I, my reverso. I, I like your reverso. I miss mine a lot. So yes, I like your reverso, and I like your uh your sub. Uh, oh, your too. I like your explorer too. I see. Got so, you. Yeah, I really, I really miss, I really miss that reversal. Um, 
Yeah. So I'm envious whenever I see that or whenever I see anyone else with that. It was that was my one regret. Oh, okay. Got you. Got you. What, I understand. Well, what is your next what is your next watch that you have in mind? Uh that's that's a really good good question there. Um I I really do um I really think I need a um I think I need a diver. I kind of don't have a diver in the collection cuz after I got rid of the gold sub, I I I had two divers. I had a no date sub and then I had the gold sub and then I've gotten I got rid of one because I had already had the it's a long story but i i think i need a, some sort of diver i don't know whether i should go pan or i like a pam 111 or a pam 112 uh, or do i go no date or any sub would be cool any sub or sea dweller would be cool i don't know then i'm confused do i go two tone or because i love the bluesy yeah uh, i don't know well, the Panerai, I mean, I isn't that I don't think you're a big fan of larger size watches, right? Is I mean, you're you're talking about your IWC at 42. I mean, the Pam would be yeah. 40. I'm starting to warm to it, but, you know. Okay. Uh Divers. Um 50 fathoms is out for you, right? There you you want to make Yeah. That? That's a bullshit brand, you know. <laughs> uh yeah get get to panerai get to pam uh either one of those if you're warming to the bigger size watches i it was hard to see you i, I gotta be honest it, it, it's hard to imagine archie with uh with the panerai um yeah i gotta be honest with that mm, i hear what you're saying uh i gotta tell you i think i need some sort of drive i don't have a drive i've got two chronographs um i got two chronographs um but i really do think i need a diver i think a dive watch could really do me good just about now i think i think i mean you don't need to have every genre covered but yeah i think i need a, a diver because i've got a chrono i got a g i got such a wonderful range of watches so that would be uh, if you were reviewing your watch collection. The one that's what you would add to it would be a divers. Yeah, I think I think I think that's what I want to add eventually. I tell you, I actually sold. You know, when you've churned watches, the watches I really wanted back was the Amiga Speedmaster Man on the Moon. Whenever I've sold it, I've always missed it, so I wanted that back. And the other thing I really wanted was a. Um, I really wanted. The Brega back, man. Did I miss that Brega? Ah, oh, I really. What, about what do you think about Hublot? Hublot. Definitely no. I hate that brand with a vengeance. Oh, all right. What yeah, is it about? Yeah. Why don't you like that? Sorry. Why don't you like the Hublots? Ah, oh, no, Hublot just sucks. You know, it just. I think Hublot is just. Uh, who, you no, know, it's just overrated. I mean, what is it? It's ETA based. It's um. They do some in house. So I think some of them are in house. They're black, the Black Magic or whatever that one's called. Big Bang. Big Bang. Um, I got to tell you something, really. Um, I really do think that Hublot is uh. Is way overrated. I hate. I had someone who asked me what did I think of it, and I, 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 I found it very hard to tell them. I hate the brand. I kind of said, okay. "Why would you buy one?" I just think that's. Do you really like the Hublot, Rich? Uh, seriously, I, I, I wouldn't spend my money on it, but uh, if some, yeah. I would wear it if it was gifted to me because I do kind of like the looks. But the Big Bang reminds me a lot of the Nautilus, and uh, that's one you should get. That should be your diver. This should be the Nautilus. Cool, the Nautilus. That's expensive, Rich. I'm not. I'm not rich. That's Archie Luxury, though. That's that's an Archie Luxury watch. Mm, I know. I've got one Patek. Did you like my idea of having one brand per watch? 
One brand per watch. Yeah, I, I do. I, uh, for me, I would go two, two, two brands at most. But yeah, one brand works. I think. Um, which one? Yeah, I like it. I like it. I, I that could work. Yes, I know what you're saying. But there are um, Rolex, there are Rolexes that I would get where, like for example, I wouldn't mind an Explorer. I wouldn't mind a Pepsi along with a Sub. So. You know that's more than one so i mean there are some brands that are worth having more than one. Oh, i see but you don't think so yeah look i i i i was thinking you know maybe rolex is a brand you could have more than one um yeah grand seiko could be another i think you did a show you did at someone's review where you said somebody had way too many grand seikos i think Someone had yeah. five or something. Yeah, I think it's crazy. Why would you do that, man? Yeah, that's that's a lot. That that's too many. But I could see I could see Rolex as being a brand where it would be difficult to have just one within that Rolex brand. Yes. I understand. I understand. Um it is, it is a tricky thing. It is very, very tricky. I, I got to tell you, I, I do find it very, very hard at times to um, to really... I, I like to have rules in my collection. You know, I like to have rules. I find it easier to live. It's like when you're at school, they say, write an essay on anything you want, or they say, write an essay on the Industrial Revolution. I find it so much easier when they give me some rules i can yeah. write about stuff but when you got no rules i don't even know where to begin you know what i mean <laughs> yeah um it's it's yeah but to answer your question one i i one one watch per brand works that could work yeah the only problem is what do i do i got the explorer well i suppose i have to get a pan or i pan i gotta get a pam i gotta get what's a, pan. A, what's a pre what, what can you get a pre-owned nautilus for now cool they're you? not cheap I'd hate to go there. Ooh, that's just crazy. Under under I could probably, yes, yeah, a lot of money. I, yeah. Look, I, I can't do that. I can't look. I, I'm not well off like that. I mean, yeah, no, very few are. I understand. You, but you know, that, I could just see you, and I think a lot of your viewers, viewers would see Archie Luxury with a Nautilus. But you'll have to call one. You'll have to call the uh, the brothers up and ask them to hook you up. Yes, yes, I know what you're saying there. That's a good point. Um, I, I, I really do think you've got to be so damn careful with what you choose there. Like, um, I, I like a balanced collection. I like someone's collection. I go, wow, this is really cool. You know, that's what I like. I like cool collections. Yeah. Okay. And. So uh, how close are you getting to a divers? Are you getting what's your uh, time? There's no, there's no, there's no time limit. I, I, I um, I, look, I, I, look, I, I always think collections are a work in progress. You know, you don't have to do something immediately. You know, yeah, I don't. I, you don't have to jump and do stuff super quick. You know, um, time limit for me is. Uh, I got a couple years. It doesn't really matter. I mean, I'd like to have a diver uh, probably within. I would like a diver within um, a couple of years, I suppose. But sometimes it's good to have missing holes in your collection because yeah. don't don't give up the don't. Yeah, you want you want that chase. You want to continue it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 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 true. You you really do want that little chase there and you know you gotta you gotta have something to aim for rich you yeah, gotta have something to yeah. aim for otherwise the dream keep the dream going yeah you gotta have something to aim for you know that's very important i think i think that's um really important to 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 have there um i gotta say rich um I, I, I do like providing the YouTube content. I like making the videos. The videos, you know, I, I, I do like it. Take, that does take a lot of time. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, for sure. 
uh, you know, th th things can be a bit tough, Rich. It's it's not not always easy. You know, it can be it can be hard at times. But um, well, yeah. When when did you realize that you could make a a, a living full time on YouTube? Was there a specific video that you realized? Oh, you know what? I could do this. I could be Archie Luxury full time. Well, it, it's more so that I fell into it. See, I I lost my job. Yeah. I lost yeah. my job, Rich. I remember. I lost. I lost my job, and waste um, management was that a, was the waste management company. Yeah, they they didn't really appreciate my type of comedy, you know. Yeah. They didn't understand it. They don't understand my type of shtick. They don't <laughs> understand my type of shtick. So. Uh, well, was there one video that 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 went viral? Maybe that you said, "Oh, you know what." I could do well, I started I earning money. What well, the funny thing is, I started earning money, and that's what's encouraged me to make videos. Is I was earning money, right. and I could actually buy watches from the revenue. Oh, it was just amazing because I love my hobby. I love my watches, Rich. I yeah. love material goods more than people. That's the honest <laughs> truth. I really do love material. I love well-made things, and uh, yeah. you know, there's something about. You jump in a, a cheap, nasty car, then you jump in a a well-made car. There's something about quality. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think you shared with me once uh, over the phone, um, life is short and to uh, enjoy the good things. That, that, you that do would... have to. You're right. You have to enjoy life, you know? Yeah, you were, that conversation was so serious. You're like, you, you were talking about getting older and and you wanted to enjoy things more and um, yes like you're right yeah. you're right yeah. you know before you know it we're gone and uh i i love travel travel is fantastic i um yeah i gotta be honest if you've had a bit of a good life but um i do love my rich watches i love my material goods and uh i would love to what am i i, I would love to get a president what do you think of getting a president i think the new 40 mil president is amazing not you want to go to 30 you want to go down to the 36 no nah, i want the 36 is great um In your rose I, gold? are you talking rose gold or yellow gold probably yellow probably yellow, yellow. okay yeah 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 I, think, I i don't think yeah i wouldn't do the 36 for myself for that one but yeah, I think I would go yellow. I think yellow looks it looks right on that on the president. Or white yeah. gold. White gold. Yeah, no, I think that's a, a cool white gold. Uh no, I think in a president you gotta go yellow. I think I mean it depends if you're buying new or used. If you're buying new I'd possibly go rose gold, but I tell you honestly, I'm really happy with the watches I've got. I do love them. Right. And uh Tell me this, what what made you want to have a YouTube channel about watches? What made you do this, Rich? What's on the wrist? Tell me, tell me the reasoning behind it. You know, I just I just like watches. I did an unboxing on my on my Grand Seiko and, and that had that had moderate success. Um, you know, I, and, and it I mean it had a couple or a few thousand views, whatever it was, but it was just an opportunity for me to uh, I guess just express talk about watches um you know largely because of what you you started you started open the doors for all of us i thought there was a nice niche there and uh um but it's a very button up our niche is very buttoned up so i wanted to do a little bit more i didn't want it to be so serious so i just tried to bring some yep. i love your your video with the rocks <laughs> falling on the collection that's so cool <laughs> oh the trailer yeah you know that was my first one that was kind of cringe the audio wasn't very good on that some of the audio wasn't very good on my uh, on my beginning ones, but you know, you learn. I was learning, and hopefully, hopefully, all that kinks have been worked out. I, I really hope you keep going. I want you to keep making stuff. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I I, I enjoy doing it. Um. Yeah. I mean, I, I like doing it. I like bringing some humor to it whenever I can. I do. I do like my collaborations with you. In fact, the last QA uh, that I did with you, there were some viewers that had some follow-up questions, literally, where they, they sent me messages saying, hey, the next time you talk to Archie, ask him this. You, you want wow. me to ask questions? Sure, give it a go. 
Well, one of those questions was, uh, I think they were comparing, the, well, not comparing, but the QA that you did with Ariel, I think you mentioned that you somehow you don't fit, you don't feel that you fit in with, with the uh, watch community the, the, the way that maybe Ariel or Ben Clymer does. But yes. a follow-up to that with one of the viewers wanted to know, or a couple wanted to know is why? Why do you feel that way? The reason I feel that way is because these other watch people, they get free tours of the factory they get treated like royalty i've never received nothing from these guys how well did i think didn't someone ask you how do you want to get involved in that do you want to get more um yeah well, I'd, I'd like i'd like to go on a factory tour with them but they don't even i i'm an influencer right they don't even acknowledge me it's really really they never I, I've steered so many people towards high-end horology. Yeah. They never even give me a thanks or, hey, you're doing a good thing. They never even give me a pat on the head. Nothing. Well, that's definitely owed you. I mean, you, you, are, the, you are the godfather of the, of the luxury watches on YouTube. Yeah, I get how nothing that, out of it. But how, much that, how much do you attribute to maybe some of the, <laughs> the, the language choices? Do you think that might, turn off, might have turned some of the... Uh, the Swiss are just so boring. This is the problem. They are so, so <laughs> damn boring, you know. Right. They're not exciting people. So you think that maybe so well, but Archie Luxury wouldn't be Archie Luxury without without, you know, who you are and what you say. But do you think that maybe if you if you if your language wasn't the way that, that might have changed things or the Swiss's perception of you? Uh, it's hard to say. It's very, right. very hard to say, but I kind of disappointed, you know, very disappointed. Yeah. But Archie Luxury, I mean, for everyone who knows about everyone else, they also know about Archie Luxury. I mean, that you can't not yeah. know about who you are if you know about everyone else. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. It's, um, yeah, no, no, that's a, that's a fair point. That, that that is a fair point. That is a fa fair point. But um, what if you just picked up the phone. What if you called one of the manufacturers and said, "Hey, this is Archie Luxury. I would love to to come on a tour." Um, I'm sure they would have to listen to what you'd have to say. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm considering it. I'll, I'll consider anything. You know, I I I don't mind that. Right. I don't mind it. It's um. Yeah, look, it's 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 a hard one. It's a hard one, Rich. I got to tell you, it is a hard one. But um, it, it's a bit of an unthankful job there. No one, I, just because someone says, "Hey, I'm buying an Amiga," that I don't get a dollar out of it. You know that? I don't ever oh. get nothing out of it. You know, so it can be a bit. It's a very brutal industry. Um. I think your first factory tour, once you do your first legitimate factory tour, I think that would just, I think that would open the doors greatly. Yeah, that's right. I think it could. It could. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good I'm, point. I'm going to be your agent. I'm going to get on the phone right now with um, okay. someone. We'll get somebody on the phone for you and set okay, that up. Okay, no worries. No okay. worries there. That sounds great. No worries. Rich, we better wrap this up. It's been great having you on the program. I just wanted to ease into it. Let's let's do this again, okay? Absolutely. Thanks for having me. No worries. Thank you so much.